five in the first five minutes of the game, and we were really lucky to be in the ball game at the halftime. I mean, they, we, we all miss, miss opportunities, and, and they missed an opportunity in the first half to almost have knocked us out of the game. And, uh, but when I walked off the floor and we were seven down, and, and I, I thought everything would depend on how well we got started in the second half, as it usually does, I think, in a, in a game that you're trying to hang in to get a chance to win. And we probably played through the entire second half about as well as, uh, as we played any time this year. And, and really, uh, we made plays, we stayed, we, we got the lead. Uh, and then, then continue to make plays. They made plays too. Um, Jackson's basket was obviously a, a great thing uh, for us to wind up the game with, but it's the first time now in, in our last three games that we've made the play at the end to win the game. We had the other two games won and just, just lost them because of judgment or not being able to make, uh, to make a play. Uh, and uh, we, had, we had a lot of help from uh, everybody really contributed. I thought that Jackson moved really well without the ball. I thought he probably played as well without the ball this year or as I've seen him play this year. Uh, it, <clears throat> sometimes it's a difficult thing when a really good team, which A&M is, I, I think that uh, that Billy has done a great job uh, with this whole basketball. And it's a it's a neat place to play. The, the enthusiasm of the people, the support they give their team. Um, I think he's done a great job with the whole overall uh, picture here in basketball. And and yet when we beat them at the buzzer at home, and uh, uh, sometimes it's hard to get a really good team. Uh, ready to play when that team comes back. And we've been having some problems uh, with, with finishing games. And they haven't played real well. And, and sometimes that can, that can hurt uh, a team that's as good as A&M. So we perhaps were able to take advantage of that a little bit. Anybody got a question? What did you see from uh, White in practice leading up to the standard? We didn't see anything from him in practice. We just had to. Uh, make some changes. If he was the best guy, we had to make the change. It wasn't anything missed. Cool. Coach, can you talk about your memories of Shelby Metcalf? I didn't know. <clears throat> I didn't know Shelby real well. Uh, I, I knew him probably better through uh, through Gerald than I actually knew him. And, and uh, Gerald really liked him. And then when I came <clears throat> came out here to coach. <clears throat> I think that <clears throat> this is the first time we've come down here to play that Shelby didn't eat dinner with us the night before the game. And I always really enjoyed that. That's where I, I kind of got to know him. I, I think that, that uh, I think we only played against each other twice maybe as, as coaches. And, uh, but I really enjoyed it. Uh, in fact, one time we came down here to play, I went out uh, in the afternoon fishing with him. I think that's the only time I've ever fished on a game day. I think we got our ass beat too. So. <laughs> but uh, he was really <clears throat> a good guy to be around and in, <clears throat> in a way reminded me a little bit of Abe Levins. He had a, a really good sense of humor. And if you paid attention to what he was saying when he was talking about basketball, he said a lot of good things. So he said a lot of good things for coaches to, to know about the game of basketball. And it was easy when <clears throat> the first time we came down here, when he went out deep with Gerald and I, uh, it was just so easy to see how much he really liked the game of basketball. Just, just how much he liked basketball. He's a good man. <coughs> Anything else? Yeah, Bob, after um, loss three, was the whole thing at the end there just to get it in your best player's hands and let him do what he could with it? Well, I would hope so. I mean, you know, if you're on the, 
if you're on the goal line and you've got a guy that's averaging 400 yards a game on 10 carries, it's a good idea to get the ball in his hands. Been around too much football. But what happened, though, that I think was, was really good is that we got the ball in quickly. Uh, uh, Burgess had made, had made an error in our game with Nebraska at the end when he didn't get the ball in bounds. He, he flipped it to the official. And in doing that, <clears throat> the defense gets set, and we ended up losing the ball. But I thought that he reacted really well, and then Jackson reacted really well. And that's a tough... That's a tough thing for the defense because they, they obviously can't foul. And the thing that pleased me the most was that we've been after Jackson because of his uh, failure to use the shot fake a lot. And he came down and had presence of mind enough to know how much time was left. He made a shot fake and that cleared his shot and then he hit it. You know, he handled that <clears throat> extremely well at the end. Bob, what really <clears throat> I, I think I think to, to what you're talking about, <clears throat> I think it'd been a hell of a mistake if we'd have called timeout because we'd have never gotten a break like that, you know. And that's why these kids. I didn't call timeout, and, and that's why these kids deserve an awful lot of credit for getting it in and getting it down the floor. Because if we call timeout, we're not going to get that shot. During A&M's last timeout before he lost shot, did you? That we, just, we just said to get it in as quick as you can. No matter what happens, he makes it, misses it, whatever, uh, get it out of there. I, if we rebound in a missed shot, I didn't want him to stand and get fouled. I wanted him to get it out of there. See, we, we played Villanova one time in, in the NCAA and we made a basket. Uh, they, we made a bucket, then they came back with a bucket with about 16 seconds to play and they are picking up full court. And we brought the ball across midcourt, <clears throat> and I can still close my eyes and see the play. We had two really good shooters in front of the ball. We're going at the basket, and the kid with the ball called timeout. He's still alive because I missed. <laughs> yes? Uh, what particularly impresses you about this AMF team? <clears throat> well, I think they play really hard. And, and I think they take, uh, they take advantage. They're, they're a good... Uh, a team that they're the best team in our league uh, by far going inside they go inside really well and, and, and those guys work inside uh, <clears throat> I think Kavalovskis is uh, from the first time I saw him to today uh, this year he is a tremendously uh, improved player they've done a great job with him and then <clears throat> I think Law is an extremely good player they've done a really good job with him also I mean he adds he adds some things to it, and, and uh, uh, they, they've just got good parts, good pieces. I'd like to comment on the officiating, but <coughs> I'm not. Yeah. It actually, actually was pretty good, which was an improvement. <laughs>